Before we begin, remember to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and share this with anyone who you think needs to hear this message. Also, if you want to support the channel, you can become a member, you will get access to weekly Q&As and the exclusive CoffeeCast podcast where we'll answer those questions. Now that we've had that out of the way, let's begin. There we go. Hola. Hola, señores. And, and, what's the Spanish word for and? I don't know. And of course, now trucks are passing by. Please, I'm a very important podcaster. Can you let me? The nerve of these people. How dare they de- be productive? How dare they? What the hell? What's next? Farmer protests? <laughs> horrible absolutely horrible hello everybody i am back and this is my first live podcast or at least public live podcast that's the word i was looking for public live podcast since i've been back how have i been i've actually been doing pretty good i've been back since when was i back july 1st so that's already 12 days but i took the week off last week for uh truthcast we did do Red Evening, of course. And I was on Aaron's show, who I invited, by the way. He might show up. Not sure. Not sure. Not sure if he shows up. How was Portugal? Interesting. Very, very interesting and confronting. Confronting as well. Because there was a lot of manual labor. And I mean physical, hard labor, as in carrying trees, rocks, Crowbar- no, uh, wheelbarrows, wheelbarrows up and down the mountain, things like that. And though I did consider myself to be strong, Portugal was like, nope, you're not, wimp. It's like, oh, oh, Jesus Christ. Ah, shit. Also, keto diet or carnivore diet, doing hard manual labor on a low body fat percentage yeah that isn't the greatest combination because you need your energy quick and you need a lot of it jack what's your body fat percentage i don't goddamn know i had veins at my dick root you know that that the v shape at your hips i had veins there i was pretty i was pretty cut when i left to portugal so there wasn't much body fat on me I don't know what that is. I don't care. I look good in the mirror. Chicks dug it. I don't care about the number. But yeah, that was a bit of a bad combination. So uh, I got like stuffed with food by the local there who uh, helped us out. Good friend of my former bass player. And I was surprised by the choices of meat in portugal kind of disappointed even like the pork okay like there there's an excess of pork like holy shit like we even had pig feet which were way better than it sounds they were good but when it comes to beef all of the beef they have is low fat and i like my ribeye to be fatty and they barely had that then i finally found one And it was 400 grams for 7 euros. So that's 15 15 euros. That is 2 pounds for about $18. Something like that. So that was pretty, uh, yeah. They laid it on thick. I'm like, ah, god damn. Uh, so well but i managed everything i managed to do everything luckily i had internet access thanks to my data on my uh mobile subscription unfortunately though that cell phone bill is gonna go through the roof this month because there wasn't any wi-fi around where i was which of course do you need it blah 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 well it does come in handy when you have an online business. Just saying. At a certain point, the local told me, like, you are on the internet too much. I'm like, I earn my money on the internet. 
And then it kind of fell silent. It's like, hmm, hmm. The kid has a point. Of course he has a point. Like, it's not like I'm scrolling through TikTok. I don't even have TikTok because TikTok is a Chinese PsyOps app and I don't want it. You will not get my data, Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> and there goes my channel, by the way. <laughs> How dare I? So, all in all, very good experience. I found out what I want more. I found out what I didn't want. In all honesty, the view was beautiful. Every morning, I stepped outside and I saw the mountains. I saw the, the sun rise from the mountaintops, things like that. The work was very rewarding. You actually felt like you did something. And you got something in return for it. But the location was a bit too much off-grid for me. Where it's like, okay, if I can walk outside and get to the nearest supermarket walking... 30 minutes, fine. But it was 30 minutes by car. That was a grudge I had. The products available was another thing. The rest? I would have liked more people of the younger age, so to say. Like 18 to 30. This was mostly 48 and up. So, all in all, not a bad experience. Very interesting but when shit hits the fan in the Netherlands, I at least have a place to go when uh, everything goes down and I can hide kind of thing. <laughs> for John Watts, stop apologizing for wanting the internet. Minimalism is the cookie cutter one size fit all. Exactly. And I don't think internet is that big of a... Um, I don't think internet is that big of a... Uh, whatchamacallit? Like, um, um, how do I phrase that? It's not a need anymore. Internet nowadays is pretty much a must uh, for how things are going in the world, how people are connecting, working, things like that. It is pretty much a must. So, yeah, fuck that. I want a stable, goddamn quick internet connection. And I like more... I'm, even though this was more of the countryside, I found out, you know what? I'm more of a town person. Not per se city. I wouldn't, I would rather be found dead in Amsterdam where it's like, oh no, push that back into the ocean. And do it. Like, hey, Poseidon, you know what? About those rising sea levels, we'll give you Amsterdam. How about that? It'll probably, it'll probably won't agree with it because who wants Amsterdam? I mean, come on. They are removing, a, my friend reminded me of this, this was years ago, but I, I don't know if they went through with it, but the new mayor wanted to remove the, and for people who are a bit cultured might know this, in Amsterdam you have this giant tourist sighting thing with I am Amsterdam, or I am Amsterdam kind of thing. And they wanted to remove the I because it was too individualistic. This is how communist these people are. It's like, oh, they're, 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 I, Amsterdam? That's individualism. We can't have that. That was literally our argument. Like, individualism. We can't have that here in Amsterdam. We're all about the collective. Please go back to see. Do it. Would be a bit hard, though, because there is a lot of land in between. I know, but still, like, maybe it could just sink. Like, you poop. Gone. Cork on it. Oh, well. Oh, such a shame. Anyway. Anyway, good to be back. The chat is busy. Uh, yeah, Santiago, I saw. I put it off memberships. Uh, you know what? Truthcast is off member. Hmm. Toothcast it for everybody. Uh, Red Evening will be membership only kind of thing. And until the Spurks come, I'm going to leave this for everybody. But if you want to become a member Santiago and get access to weekly Q&As, you are free to push that little join button. Because I still have my grocery goal of... Um, my grocery goal for YouTube. It's like, that will be amazing. Can I pay my groceries with YouTube? I can do it with my business. I mean, fine, but... 
with YouTube, it's kind of like, what do I do on YouTube? I give information, I give it for free, and I market my services, which the link of that is in the chat, by the way. Here, I jacked up prices tremendously on the hourly rate for two things. One, the monthly consultation course course is, sorry, monthly consultation group, it's not a course, it's a group, is full. And I want to focus on that. Second, since that is full, and since that takes up a lot of time, I have less time to do other things, like very important white 30-year-old male things. Plus, I want you guys to suffer when you pay me. And I got that from Cappy. Lesson learned, Captain. It's like, and I've noticed this. I have noticed this many times again. That when people get something for too cheap, they will not take the advice as seriously. They will not take action as supposed as they are supposed to do. So that's why I jacked up the individual hourly prices tremendously. Hey, you guys had enough chances to get into the monthly consultation, uh, monthly consultation group. And if you're not in there, well, well, then somebody else is going to kick ass like Marty. Organic Dutch food is expensive. You're expensive, Marty. <laughs> in, in time and patience. <laughs> but since this is my show and I can do what I want, I wanted to talk about two things. Two things. As you might know, I am a 90s child. And I grew up with Legos. Oh, wow, you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know. I have my ship collection. I had my ship collection. I sold a lot of it. But that was for a reason. I'm getting them back. Bigger. Better. Uh, I digress. Apologies. But since Lego is one of those nostalgic companies for me, I still keep an eye on, like, oh, what are they releasing this year? Like, oh, are they bringing back, like, 90s Pirates, which they did for the uh, Barracuda Bay set, which is still there, by the way. Love that. That is my prime piece right there. It's just, yes, mine. But will they do it? Well, they only released the idea set. Are they going to bring back the Knights? Yes. They're going to bring back the castle theme. And this is where I wanted to get into. So, okay. Uh, there is this YouTuber, and I will... Um, you know what? I will link his video. There's a YouTuber called Life of Lego. And the last O is with a zero. I don't know why he did that. But maybe he's cool. He's pretty dope, though. A pretty dope YouTuber. But here it is. And he noticed something about the 90th anniversary castle. Now, for people who don't know what the 90th anniversary castle is, by the way, if you have fitness-related questions, whatever, go ahead in the chat. I will pay attention to it. I want to focus on this first because, yeah, my show. I can do what I want. <laughs> We're going to go back to the informative things as well. So, okay. Uh, round back up a bit. What is the Lego's 19th, 90th anniversary thing? The 90th anniversary is, as it states, Lego wants to celebrate the series released in the 90s, which include Pirates, Castle, Spaceship. Now, that castle had been teased for six months, maybe even longer. Can't remember exactly. And Watson and I were, like, excited about it. Like, holy shit. Oh, what's it going to be? Oh, are they going to do the Lion Knight's Castle? Like, no, the Royal Knight's Castle. My apologies. Royal Knight's Castle, which till this day is the best Lego castle ever released. The Royal Knight's Castle. Will they do an homage to that? Because that will be amazing. Are they going to do a base plate? Are they going to build the base? Things like that. So we were wondering, and then information started dripping out. It's like, it's going to have 4,500 pieces, and it's going to sell for 350 euros. Piece by part, or part by piece, that's not bad. 
4,500 pieces? Holy shit, how big is this thing? Uh, Pirates of Veracruda Bay is 2,600 piece. And that thing is like this. It's like this wide. I'm not kidding. And yay high because of the mast, but it's a dense fucking set. And I can already see the viewers drop off. Hey, you know what, buddy? I can talk what I want to with that. If you want fitness advice, you know where to find me. But um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So we were excited. And then all of a sudden, this drawing got leaked of it. And the trailer for the Lego Back to the Future DeLorean came out. And the, the, the trailer for that. They had a trailer video. I don't know why. It's like, okay. Commercials. And there was a castle in the background. And people were like losing their shit. It's like, that's it. That's it. It has to be it. And they were like taking the frames apart and things like that. Yeah, that has to be it. And it has a ramp, blah, blah, blah. Finally, it got released on June something, something, something. Uh, hold on. What is this? There we go. There we go. Uh, there we go, go, go. Mm -hmm. Now, I will show you it. I will show you it. Uh, share screen. And after that, I'm going to get into Rolo's book. So, here it is. This thing is goddamn huge. And of course, Lego had to increase the prices because of inflation and things like that. Blah, 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 blah. Now, as you might see, there's nothing wrong with this. It looks great. It looks amazing. Look at this. Holy hell. This is the box. And here's something I started to notice. Here it is. And this is something Life of Lego pointed out as well. Instead of a king, they now have a queen, a kick-ass queen. The Guardian Knight in full armor is a female as well. It has been said that this one is too. Woman. Idiot man. This one's a girl, too. Just a normal guard, male. This looks like a stable boy, male. Oaf, here, male. Now, is this a huge issue? Well, I'm just noticing that, first of all, the king is gone, and the royal guard are female. This knight is female. And, like, the lower positions are male. And, as we might know, ba -ba 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 -ba. this was a while back. Right, Lego started to release um, Queer Eye for the Straight Guy as well. things like that but this shit already started in 2014 how did lego become a gender battleground 2014 uh in the context of criticism endless pink yeah the people started to complain that the girly lego sets were all pink and blah 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 and all the tough like knights and pirates were all male well maybe because in general, I know, I know, these people hate generalizations, but bell curve, in general, boys, guys, like knights and pirates. But now, in 2021, an article by bust.com came out. Uh, no, no, feminism media is not more important than ever. You get these kinds of articles and is this a bit is this a bit 
uh, red meat. I want to get somewhere. I do want to get somewhere. Mm. Where are you? Horrible website. I gave it clicks. So Lego says bye-bye to gendered playtime with new gender-neutral toys and Ready for Girls campaign. And this is what bothers me. Ready for Girls campaign. Because you saw in that set, as you saw in that castle set, men are removed. Why not have a king and queen? Because what is your target demographic? When it comes to a 400 euro set, just asking obvious questions here. Are single women 30 and up going to buy that? Who want to play a male or a female power fantasy of being a rocking queen? I don't think so. The $400 sets are for the freaking collectors. And maybe, maybe the kid who gets his parents far enough, who like pushes it, who pushes them to the edge and bankruptcy and whines and complains so hard that they will finally buy that set to end the terror that is their youth. <laughs> Just kidding. In all honesty, spoiled children, parents, it's your own bloody fault. But let's continue. Um... Do I want it like this or do I want it like this? This looks more. Uh, hmm. ah, I like this one. Lego announced earlier this week that it will remove gender bias from its toys, paving the way for more equal play. Again. Equal play. My dear, I ask you again. Then where... Where is the king? And where are the male guards? As we all know, and I might go a bit off a tangent on here, feminism has never been about equality, but supremacy. Go listen to Aaron Clary and Turk Flinging Monkey, and TFM hits the ball out of the park, nail onto the head. Women who are just angry, they're not men. And now you get this remove the man crap. Why am I saying this? Why am I exaggerating this? Because we've seen it time and time and time and time and time and time and time again. Look at Warhammer 40k. Infected by social justice warriors. Look at Doctor Who. Any Doctor Who fans here? Any of the British? Doctor Who got dragged through the aisle of equality... And ended up being nothing more than a female supremacy show. Women are better than men. We didn't care. We just wanted to watch a freaking show. Oh no. And then Star Wars. Do I need to say more? We have seen this time and time again. And now they're doing it with one of my favorite nostalgic things. The one thing I had left. Of peace, quiet, and serenity. Goddamn garbage truck. But why? Well, we know why, because we can't have anything nice. If my name is a Jack, Jack goddamn name here. God damn it. You have something nice, ruin it. Now, is it ruined? I haven't even gotten through the full article. I'm not going to, by the way. I don't need to because we've seen this. We have seen this. Look at Star Wars. The Force is female. The Force is female. Fuck. Why should it be? The Force never had a gender. At least not in my retrospective. I watched fucking Yoda as a kid. I remember. Seriously. One of my fondest memories is... Like, I don't even know how I got to it. But remember Animaniacs? Like, this non-political cartoon I know back in the olden days. The good old days. Before the dark times. Before the Empire. Animaniacs. Made references to some darkly clad, robotic, 
evil guy. And I'm like, oh, who's that? Wow. It's awesome. And some other shows did. I believe like uh, The Simpsons did it too. It's like, what is that? And I don't know how and I don't know why. But my father, I believe, introduced me to Star Wars. He's like, go watch that movie. It's like, oh, wow. And I, I remembered this vehemently. We rented it at our local video shop or whatever you want to call it. Like you guys call it Blockbuster. We just call it the uh, video take. And I rented Star Wars and I immediately after watching it, I, I finished the. Uh, what's that scene called? Uh, the, the, the where they get the medals. The appreciation scene, not coronation. What's the word I'm looking for? Graduation? No. <laughs> I finished the last scene where they get the medals. Like Leia, Luke, Han, Loa. Uh, Leia, Luke, Han, Chewie stand there. C-3PO, R2-D2. They get the medals. I took the video out of the video recorder. And I ran to my friend. I'm like, holy shit. Gotta watch this movie now. He hadn't saw, he hadn't saw it. I did. And I watched it again right away with him. And we freaking loved it. We adored it. Never in our lifetime did when did we go like, oh, you know what? The Force is so cool, girls are not included. You had fucking Princess Leia. Kicked ass. Was a bit snarky. And by the way, weirdly enough, showed no emotions when Obi-Wan died, even after being saved by him 10 years prior. Just saying. Could be me. And then I went back to the video store. I'm like, what's the one where Vader takes his mask off? Because I was completely interested by that. But the video store or no, the video store owner, he was like, Yeah, okay, that's like the return of the Jedi. He didn't say he didn't tell me that, by the way. But he said Empire Strikes Back, which actually was the second film. So by tricking me, he let me watch the movies in chronological order. And I freaking loved it. But never in my right mind did I think, oh, wow, the, the force is gender biased. No. Never, never came up. Um... The prequels came out. I watched the first movie I ever watched in theater, Star Wars Episode One. Oh wow, there's a Jedi Council. There are more Jedi. Wasn't Shock T on there? Was a female. Just saying. Uh, Pat May was. Pat May. Let's not get into that. Then you had Attack of the Clones with the kick-ass female bounty hunter in the beginning. She was pretty cool. With the chase scene through Coruscant. And then you had all the Jedi together and Geonosis. Pretty much female Jedi. I never thought anything of it. It was just like, uh. And then years later, now that we have this Marxism in a dress. It's like, not enough females. Like, who cares? Because... <laughs> Natalie Port person. <laughs> oh, God damn it, John. But this is why I'm hammering on about this Lego thing. Because Watson and I have been looking forward to this set, just peacefully putting our minds off, everything to zero, enjoying. But now, will it be detrimental to the set? In all honesty, in all honesty. No, the castle in itself is still a freaking castle and it's huge. But with the minifigures, I'm kind of like, ah, it's like, I know what you're doing because I've seen it before in Star Wars, in Marvel, in Doctor Who, now with the Rings of Power. It's like, what the hell? Also, since they're going to release these sets, uh, Lego also always releases um, 
minifigure sets in plastic bags. And then it has to be 21. Mm. Is it 21? No. I go minifigs. 2022. Give me what I'm looking for. Series 23. Thank you. Because you'd think that because of that they would maybe add a king into the set. Where it's like, you know what? You can get a king, but we want you to buy the minifigures. It's like, eh, you know what? Eh, capitalism, eh, I can get behind that. But here we go again. The exclusive minifigure released this summer is this. I mean, kind of pushing it hard on the nose here. Now, is this necessarily per se a bad thing? No, not really. But what do you want, Lego? This is being advertised as like this huge goddamn castle. Uh, 90 celebration, things like that. But then they're going to swap out all the normally traditional male figures with women. And... Some people might say in the comments, oh, here's another white male feeling threatened. I'm not threatened, but I know what you idiots are doing and leave my fucking hobby alone. How about that? Because it's removing something. It's trying to tell me something. And I don't want that. I don't want my fucking hobby to tell me something. I don't want to look at my hobby and think, oh yeah, this is because of inclusivity. Because yes, yes, females led armies. Oh, but what about Joan of Arc? Exception does not make the norm. And it will never make the norm. I know how hard you groomers are pushing in preschools, but you'll never be the norm. 50% chance, by the way. And yes, I went there. I went there because I'm really sick and tired of the goddamn bullshit. Because now, if I purchase that shit set, because it's an if, by the way, I have to look at that and be like, oh yeah, there's no king and the guards are female as well because, yeah, feminism, yay. And now I am reminded of an ideology by a fucking collectible. Get that shit out. But it's not going to happen because it's only going to get worse. You had the possibility right here of just doing an homage to the sets of old. But nope, what is old must be broken. What's that again in um, The Last Jedi? Kill the past? Blah, 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 blah. All that fucking nonsense. That's what they're doing here as well. Jack, aren't you too old for Legos? Yes. I might be. Bitch, I might be. Is Ryan too old to play digital Lego Legos? Bitch, he might be. Am I not in my in my normal time helping Governor Megatron, John Fox, Captain Kapow, uh, blah, 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 Gico, Alex Patino, Dante, Marty with their fitness and health and strength training and diet? Yeah. Well, you know what? When I'm all done with that, I like to relax. I play video games every now and then. And every now and then, I still like to build a set. Bite me. Shouldn't you be married and have kids? With whom? With whom? Book of Numbers. Aaron Clary, go read it. He's not far off. <laughs> he's, he's, he's far from off. It's like... People always complain about the Lost Boys generation. I'm sorry, but if playing with plastic blocks is more fun than your average date, we didn't fuck up. At least I know I didn't. So I can do what I want in my goddamn spare time because it makes me happy. It doesn't need to make you happy. If you want to drive supercars through the mountains, which in honesty would be cool, 
but go ahead. When I look at the supercar, I'm like, it looks beautiful. It absolutely does. Do not get me wrong. It also looks highly impractical and way too expensive for the Netherlands because of insurance, taxes, and gas. I'll walk or take public transport or you're brokey or poor, whatever. Look, fine, but I'm happy. Isn't that what my life is supposed to be about? That I'm happy? And then I'm right for me? Yeah, hey, guys, you know what else they did? No, honesty, I'm going to be brutal here. But they took the nuclear family. The nuclear family didn't even exist. That is the question in and of itself as well, because the game didn't change. Things just got amplified. I mean, 1950s Coca-Cola commercial. Remember that. But why not just do what you really enjoy? I mean, I know guys who play Magic the Gathering. I still know guys in their 30s who have manga collections. Go a goddamn head. Enjoy it. But also own it. Own it. Because I am not going to quit dating. I am a man, goddammit, and I have my needs. God damn it. <laughs> okay. But own it. And this is something, like, I think that is where a lot is being preyed upon, where... Guys like to have nerdy hobbies and there's somebody comes in like, oh, that's geeky, that's stupid, and women will find you less, less attractive because of it. I'm sorry, but I, in front of me, have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven PSA 10 Pokemon Japanese promos in front of me. I've had girls walk in here. First thing they say is, whoa, is that Pokemon? It's like, yeah, that's Pokemon. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's like, if you stand there and be like, oh, yeah, shit. Oh, oh I had to put those away. Shit. Um, uh, yeah, they, they are my, um, I'm keeping them safe. No, they're yours. Oh, why do you have them? Well, because I felt nostalgic for them. And you know what? I used to collect them as a kid. I sold them. And now that I'm older, I'm kind of like, yeah, you know what? I would want them back, but I want them back differently. And then you have a conversation about that. It's a great conversation starter. Uh, real quick, Atham El Duega for the super sticker. It was the fox, I believe. The dancing fox. Nice. Thank you very much, Atham, for the five bucks. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Damn, I've been going on a rant. Jesus. Jesus. I Normally, I'm kind of like, oh, 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 welcome to the truth cast, guys. Why am I never right? No, but don't get me wrong, because a lot of the criticism... Go look under his video, by the way. I'll, uh... I posted it, right? Oh, busy chat, by the way. Hello, everybody. Please hit the like button while you're at it. I would like that. 21 people watching. But okay, this video, Life of Lego. The comments under that are nothing more but ad hominems and straw man arguments. Where it's like, oh, here's just a fragile white male, which, by the way, is pretty racist. Saying, fragile white male uh, who doesn't like women. This has nothing to do with girls. Nothing. I don't mind, like, one or two, like, female Lego minifigures. Like, the Barracuda Bay set has two. And it fits. It fits. Because they didn't change the captain. Who's still a guy. And who was a guy 30 years ago. But now, with the castles, it's like, no, we can't have a king anymore. No, gotta have a queen. And she will be dark and beautiful and terrible as the dawn and treacherous as the sea kind of thing. Because it wouldn't be a Jack Napier podcast without a goddamn Lord of Rings quote. I always get it in. Boom. Useless talent number 35. But okay. <sighs> it's the removal of man. It is the infiltration of ideology and if there is a lego fan who finds this video and who's kind of like who i don't know about that napier guy he yells a lot he's good looking but he yells a lot i would advise you or you know what if life of lego sees this mate if you if you watch this go read social justice warriors always lie by vox v-o-x uh, sorry v-o-x 
day. D-A-Y. Spelling Dutch, I know. But go read that and you will see the tactics they will use. You will see the tactics. Because this set, I will guarantee you, it will either plummet because of this shit or a majority of men will still buy it. It will mostly be a majority of men. Guaranteed. Guaranteed a majority of men. Not even kidding. But this is just one of those things where I'm kind of like, really? You had to go there. Did you really had to go there? It's like, I was looking forward to this so much. Just a reveal alone. I wasn't even sure if I was going to buy it because it is a large amount. And it takes up a lot of space. It's like, did I want to do it? Well, kind of did. But now, with those minifigures, and kind of like, this set wants to force ideology down my throat. And that is not what I'm doing that for. Don't want to be lectured by Legos. Exactly! The Obi-Wan series <laughs> doesn't exist. Poor Chewie. Yeah. <laughs> I can actually do a pretty good Chewbacca. I'm not doing it. Uh, Governor Megatron read the feminist line as well. Perfect book to argue the feminist about equality nonsense. Yeah, that is a good book. Uh, the Myth of Male Power by Will Ferrell 2. I haven't read it yet, but it's supposed to be good. Don't get me started with Thor. No. Captain Capal lost interest in uh, Doctor Who. Yep. Do boys buy Lego Friends? No. Do we need to have more male characters in Lego Friends? Because Lego Friends is too much feminine, uh, too much pointed towards the feminine. Oh, we can't have that. No. You see, and that is my problem. Just look at it. Look at this ideology. It isn't about equality. It is about infiltration. It is about infiltration and replacement. Look at fucking Star Wars. Look at Doctor Who. And look at the Lord of the Rings. The Rings of Power. We will see it. Look at... Uh, uh, Marvel. Look at Marvel. How force-fed Captain Marvel was in the last movie. Ugh. God damn it, Marty. I love the LGBTQ confused Lego prints. Oh, you know what I did enjoy? They did a queer eye for the straight... A uh, guy set something like that, and it tanked. I was like, yes. Piss off. Now, the Lego Rainbow set, I was kind of like, everybody's awesome. I'm like, eh, okay, cool. That's cool. But, by God. Ugh. If I am missing anything, or if I'm exaggerating, just let me know. I know what Rob would say. Jack, why do you care? Stop letting the red pill lens ruin your hobbies, ruin your enjoyment. Because he really enjoyed Kenobi, especially because he watched it with his dad. And he's right. But Kenobi is something you watch one time and then you're done with it. A $400 Lego set, you sit there or you put there and you have to look at it. And now it will stare back at me and be like, you are useless because you're a white male. It's like... Oh, and then we get the whole argument of, you can replace the heads. Yes, I can. However, the official set, if you want to keep it as it was meant to be, is an ideological statement. And that's what bothers me. Because most of these people complaining do not buy this set. I guarantee it. Most of the people complaining about representation in these sets will not buy it. They're probably way too fucking poor and 12 of these sets in debt because of some stupid college degree that nobody finds any worth in. But hey, I'm going to complain on Twitter because some toy company doesn't have representation. Piss off. But hey, these major companies, they think, oh, profit. Look at the comic book industry. Look what happens when the comic book industry pandered to all these idiots. Tanking. Absolutely tanking beyond belief. And you know what's on the rise? Big, thick, anime, tittied girls. Manga. 
I wonder why. Maybe because the target demographic doesn't like to get shat on. Could be me. Might be wrong. But hey, numbers don't lie, as Shakira once said. Or was that hips? I can't remember. I wasn't paying attention to what she was saying. <laughs> Horrible. I am absolutely terrible. I know. <laughs> but yeah, I mean... <sighs> most people are still going to buy this for the castle in and of itself, which looks bloody amazing. It really does. But the figures, I'm kind of like, Jesus, did you had to go there? Did you really? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not. But, oh well. Who knows? Moving on. Rolo's new book. Because I was in Portugal. And I finished it. Jack, what do you think about it? If you like the first four, you're going to like this one. Uh, let's get straight to it. It just is Rolo. And I can add very little to that. It's objective. It's straightforward. It's non-emotional. And with most of Rolo's book, books, it is timeless. Minus a few things. And how do I phrase this? He mentions um, current day social media outlets, which I remember in his first book, he did it. He just made a reference to like, he wrote it as if it already was in the past. And as in, in year X, Y, and Z on the SOSWA forums. Now, with this book, I noticed a couple of times he just used on Instagram, etc., on this, on that. Nitpicking, I know, terribly nitpicking. It is not an argument. I am not saying it devalues the content of the book. Not saying that. Just saying that in the context of a timeless book, as in you can always pick it up, might have one that done differently. What I also missed, what I also missed is the good-looking loser archetype. What is the good-looking loser archetype? Um, in all honesty, the good-looking loser archetype was embodied by Tom Torero. May he rest in peace. Yeah, but Tom Torero wasn't a loser. Hear me out. No, he wasn't. He was far from a loser. He was kick-ass. Charming as hell, by the way. But he wasn't some six-foot-tall... Well, it's not even his looks that matter. But... He wasn't some wealthy internet seven figure, eight figure, multi billionaire playboy philanthropist, always walking around in suits, whatever. The guy lived in a van. The guy lived in a van, had barely anything to his name, things like that. And he pulled like crazy. Now, of course, Rolo goes into the two aspects of hypergamy alpha seed beta need where it's in comfort and excitement things like that but i wish there was a bit more on the excitement archetype where it's like you can be the biggest loser in the world and you can be that though wouldn't that be a reference to alpha buddha cory worthington worthington or worthington worthington where it's like, that kid, um, not bad looking, was in shape, did not give a crap. You can tell me a whole lot of things, but I know that kid slayed. He did. And I kind of missed a bit of that. And especially in the chapter of... Uh, learn to read, that was a good one. Ah, damn it, I should have read this down. Sexual zoning. 
the creep, strength of interest, looks count. Kind of in looks count. I kind of missed it there. And in hypergamy, the misconceptions. There was, however... And look, guys, what is it? Okay, um, moving back a bit. To me, this should have been part three. This should have been part three of the Rational Mail series. You have the first one, which is all theory. Then you have the second one, which is a bit of a guide kind of thing. More of a timeline thing. Like, Rolo doesn't do in prescriptions. Although, this is the closest he'll ever get to prescriptions, I think. Or he has ever gotten to a prescription. But the second one is more of an outline of, okay, now that you know all this, here's what you could do kind of thing. And this is more of the prescription side of like, hey, here's the actual manual and why it works. Not that I'm saying you should do it. And these are not 12 rules for life. But these are, well, all the game um, maxims. These are the game maxims. Why they work, how they work, and what you could do to get there. Well, not no, there's not much of what you could do to get there in there. He he honestly says it takes a lot of work. He's very objective and he's very good in describing it. Amused map. It's all in here. Let's see. Game tactics. DHV, demonstrating a higher value. Learn to read. Command presence. Amused mastery. I loved amused mastery. Breadcrumbs, the flow, ship test, abundant mindset, art of the AMOG. Oh, this art of the AMOG is one of those chapters where it shines through why I like Rolo's work and why I got hooked the first time I read the first Rational Mail. That is where his strategic mind comes forward, his strategic writing. The art of the AMOC. That was just, mm, that is, yes, that is my kind of theory. Because art of the AMOC is just, that is mental fuckery. Where it's like, oh, this is going on. Oh, hello there. Hmm. <laughs> and it's, it's brilliant war. It is the art of war in social dynamics. Beautiful chapter. Absolutely beautiful. Loved it. This is a horrible review, by the way. I know. It's very subjective, all of it. Blah, 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 blah. My interpretation. Should you read it? Of course you should. Um, It's more practically applicable, in my humble opinion. Um, There was another one. Where are you? Where are you? Ghosting 401. Now, this is a chapter I found very confrontational. Because ghosting wasn't about women ghosting you. It was about you ghosting friends. <clears throat> And if you don't mind, I would like to read a passage. Please all sit down. Bow your heads. <clears throat> Ghosting friends. People who knew you in your beta past will never respect you, and you will never respect yourself if you choose to associate with them anymore. I made a pretty difficult decision to, co to ghost many friends from my past. I decided that if people treated me in a way they wouldn't treat someone of high regard, respect, authority, their boss, their parent, whoever they look up to, I would next them. Boy, girl, plate, friend, family member, whoever. If a person doesn't respect you, it could be your fault. And it could be their fault. Whoever enabled and created the relationship of disrespect is not important. What's important is the result. You're associating with someone who treats you with disrespect or lesser respect than those they respect. And there is no way a man can respect himself if he's choosing to spend time with people who don't respect him. Note the word choose. Sometimes you have no choice. But when you have the option to say to yourself, you know what, fuck this, I'm bailing, or no fucking way, I'm going to see that guy, 
you must use it. This chapter was mostly about something that I had to do a couple of times in my life, where I had been progressing from whence I came. Now, from whence I came was a bit... Yeah, I'm not going to go into that. But I started working on myself, looking better, feeling better, doing better, you name it. And some guys were just abysmally disrespectful. Although I hate the word disrespect because it's thrown around. They were just plain out. They were just rude. Rude and undecent. And it's like, mate. You're a balding fat fuck. I'm here working my ass off on myself. You might have a higher income than I have, but you're still a dick. Fuck you. And even though I've been hanging around with that guy for years, it's like, no, I don't want this anymore. I had a different friend. Uh, I started working out. He was depressed, blah, 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 blah. I told him why not work out or I asked him. I, uh, I indulged him. It's like, nope, I don't want that, blah, 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 blah. Or uh, I told him something nice happened to me and it all didn't matter. I'm like, okay, fuck this, not doing it again. I want to feel good with the people who I hang my, who I hang around with. I want to feel great. And I liked that Rolo included that in a book on game, as in game as a whole. Game is your life. I am the game, as he always says. What does somebody, how does somebody act who's fully red pill aware kind of thing? He gets what he wants and he associates with what's best for him. Something, and I don't know if Ronald likes me naming him in the same sentence, Stefan Molyneux got a lot of crap about. Stefan Molyneux was blame, was called a cult leader. And hey, Rolo too. No, imagine that. But I know they're not the same, they're far from it. But Stefan always had the argument that your parents do not have a get out of jail free card for abuse just because they're parents. Same as friends, same as all other family members. Disrespectful, abusive behavior is disrespectful, abusive behavior, no matter who it comes from. And that to me was like a huge eye opener. Well, it's like, oh, so I don't have to hang around them just because we share the past or whatever. Nope. No, you don't. And I really enjoyed Rolo put that in the book. All the other chapters, will you learn about game? You will learn about game, why it works. Why and how it works. He's got a couple of examples in there, which I really enjoyed. Um, with Amuse Mastery and things like that. I like those. Is it informative? Of course, it's Rolo. I mean, have you seen his live streams? Three hours. I'm not standing there. I will die on that hill, by the way. How you want to do a... You want to... <coughs> how do you fill a podcast with Rolo? Oh, you're s simple. You just ask him what... You just simply ask him one question and sit back for 30 minutes. <laughs> That's easy. You want one and a half hour content? Three questions. All you need. <laughs> but yeah. It is a good addition to the series. In all honesty, I think it suits as a good part three. Not saying toxic masculinity was bad. Not saying religion was bad. Saying that I think the third one is a better addition to the theory discussed in the first two. And that uh, positive masculinity and religion are more societal observations then, sorry, intersexual dynamic on a societal level observations than intersexual dynamics on an individual basis. Analysis. All of a sudden, like brain fart. Oh, well. I'm on the second Rolo book now. That's my favorite, actually. That's my favorite. That is my favorite. Uh, did I miss any super chats? No. I don't know if the captain is here still. Maybe he's gone. He's gone. He has left us. He has left us for other other things.
Tut, tut, tut. Oh, well. With this, with the, th, I can do it. Hmm? Me? You? No? What's up? What's up, Camp Down? Um, no, Mar if Marty was still here as well. Well, good to see you here as well, of course. Um, with that, I will leave it. I hope you enjoyed my tremendous rant on a kid's toy. <laughs> oh my god, this shit is gonna haunt me, isn't it? This will haunt me forever. Like, aren't you the guy who got frustrated by a toy? Yes. Yes, I did. Because it was one of the few things in life that actually gave me joy. <laughs> What's next? Feminist dogs? Why don't you take those as well? Go get them. Hey, girl, there are too many male puppies. <laughs> of course. God damn it. Can't have anything nice, can we? <sighs> Nothing. Nothing in this world must remain sacred. And you wonder why manga is kicking your ass. I wonder why. Guys, hit the like button. Uh, next week will be fitness uh, <clears throat> fitness related again. Uh, I was hoping to do a new video on my rack. Oh, I didn't even get into that. <sighs> if my name isn't God. If my name wasn't Jack goddamn Napier. I ordered a rack, a new rack, a month ago. I told them, deliver it on the 7th of July. Unfortunately, the farmer's protest was going on, so the roads were blocked, so I didn't get my rack. I'm like, you know what? Shit happens. I told her, next Tuesday... I am home. Deliver it to me next Tuesday. Blockades do not concern me, Admiral. I want that rack. So I text them today, or I email them today. I'm like, hey, the delivery service says that it's at the depot, but uh, there's no time yet. I get an email back saying... Oh, we're sorry. Apparently, you agreed upon Tuesday, the 15th. But actually, today is the 12th. So they planned it on the 15th, which is Friday. I'm like, okay. It's still this week. Not a huge loss. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Can you make sure it gets delivered after 2 p.m.? Because I'm gone and I'm at home at 2 p.m. Well, I'm not sure we can. We might, but that will cost you 40 bucks extra. $40 extra. Because the euro and the dollar are now at the same rate. So who cares? $40 extra. I'm like... Listen, I was at home last week. I had nothing to do with that goddamn farmer's protest. I was right where I needed to be, and now you want to charge me extra because of this dumb mistake? I was pretty pissed off. So luckily, their phone service is open, and I called. Luckily, I got the same girl on the line who I always called, who I always get on the line when I call. I'm like, listen, honey, I do not want to be a dick. But I'm going to have to. I was here last week when it was supposed to come. And now, because of this minor, whatever, miscommunication, I need to pay 40 bucks extra for it to be delivered in a certain time slot? Come on! Jack was 40 bucks. 40 bucks is nothing, okay? I got the 40 bucks. I've got 400. I've got more. It's not about that. It's about that goddamn principle of me needing to pay more for something that didn't even need to occur. 
<clears throat> Damn it. And she says, Jack, I understand. And you're right. I'll make some calls. And I got a lovely email from her saying, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I can't promise you they're going to deliver it. Oh, no. I told them your preference lies after 2 o'clock. But I can't promise you they, they'll deliver it after 2 o'clock because you're not paying for it. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Like, my dear, you've done enough. Thank you very much. If I'm not at home at fr if I'm not home at Friday, I mean, God damn it, all the hell. Fine. So be it. But she kind of put it in a way where it's like, yeah, I I took care of it. You're gonna get your rack. And if not, uh, who knows? Maybe I'll get fat. I still know how to do it. I still can deadlift. Fortunately, I'm just gonna deadlift then. See what happens. But you know what, guys? I will leave it at that. Um, You know what? Buy my shit. I would appreciate that. Carl dismantled all of his material, but the audiobook is still in my possession. Uh, he has not reached out, nor have I re heard from anybody that I needed to take it down. So if you want Carl's material, you can get that here. Troy Francis's audiobooks that I narrated here. Uh, oh, damn it. Damn it, old hell. Damn it, old hell. I'm so glad I learned the uh, undo key combination. There we go. And if you want a personal consultation on how to get your fat ass into shape, fuck you, pay me. <laughs> no, but seriously, my Discord is open at Jack Napier Knows. I'm always willing to do the basic questions i don't mind that at all but if you want some serious help with it a personalized schedule personalized diet plan whatever go here the monthly consultation group is now full marty is part of it it's time for fat jack bulk up no i don't want that i already eat enough fat jack no no, in all honesty i tried bulking and i was like i saw myself in the mirror and i, I nope I just don't like the look. I'm sorry. I am a vain narcissist when it comes to that. It's like, no, no, I like the, the swimmer's thin, starving model look. Like cheekbones, like popping out so I can stab people with them. That's what I like. <laughs> oh, my God. Speaking of female, uh, speaking of healthy male narcissism, there is a podcast in the works. There is something in the works with me and Tallulah from The Feminine Truth. We've been going back and forth a bit. Now we're planning it. She asked if I could do today. I'm like, I'm sorry, honey, I can't do it today. I've got the squat rack. I've got my own show. Today wouldn't work. So we're planning that. It's going to be interesting. Let's see what happens. She's one of the um, she's one of the uh, female red pill content creators, so that's going to be interesting. I used to be very hesitant about it, but now I'm kind of like, you know what? Let's leave the clubhouse a bit and move to the playground. Let's see what happens. Jack Spratt ate too much fat. His wife ate too much lean. <laughs> nice. So, guys, that was it. Please uh, hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't. And if you want to support the channel, you can become a member and get access to weekly Q&As. Fitness related. You name it. Everything related. Mostly fitness because that is where my expertise lies. I have some game knowledge. I usually just bumble through it and rely on my looks. So, don't take anything I say. Just don't. Be like me. It worked for me. That's my advice. <laughs> Buy a PSA 10 first edition base set Charizard. That'll get them wet. You heard it here, folks. Okay. Cheers. Totins. Exceedingly.